Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to another blood splattered vlog. Alrighty then, so this week's movie is a little movie called The Disappointments Room, starring Kate Beckinsale. Now, truth be told, I knew next to nothing about this movie going in, outside of the fact that most of my friends who saw the movie said it wasn't very good. Which is one of the main reasons I didn't see it when it initially came out. When all my friends say it is not worth my time, I figured, well, it probably wasn't worth my time. And now, having finally seen the movie for myself, I can say definitively that yes, this movie was not worth my time. A lot of terrible quick cut editing, a lot of information that probably should be placed at different points in the movie are placed in really awkward points. And it legitimately feels like the second half of the second act is completely rushed through, like put on fast forward in this like really extended montage. And it really does feel like whole chunks of the movie were cut out in post. And you can tell this was done with zero fucks given because there are literally things that you can see in the background that indicate scenes that didn't happen. Now, I can't say for sure whether the stuff that was cut out would have improved the movie if it was put in, but it definitely felt like something was missing. But I guess at this point I should really say what this movie's about, and essentially, it's one of those 90s slash early 2000s psychological thrillers where you're not quite sure if it's a ghost story or just someone going crazy. Because you have this family who just suffered through this horrific tragedy who moves into this new house essentially to get away from it all, and the mother, who's also an architect and also working on the reconstruction of this old house, ends up finding this room that isn't listed on the plans. And she finds out through some research that this room is what's called a disappointments room, and that's essentially a room in which old people put their kids that they're ashamed of. And they're ashamed of these kids because either they were born with like horrific defects or diseases that were going to kill them like immediately like leprosy. So they shove them off into these secret rooms and keep them a secret from the rest of society so that their rich families aren't laughed at. And shortly after moving into this house and discovering this room, a whole bunch of supposedly supernatural shit happens, but you're not quite sure if it's actually happening or if the mother's just going crazy. Hey, wait a minute, if this woman was an architect, shouldn't she have already known what the disappointment rooms were? But that kind of shows what kind of movie this is. The more you think about it afterwards, the more upset and annoyed you get. But if I were to praise something about the movie, I would say that Kate Beckinsale's performance, as well as the performance of her husband, isn't terrible. And I also like the way the characters are written. Both characters are dealing with the same tragedy, but are dealing with it with their own separate ways. With one of them burying his grief deep inside and putting on a happy face for the greater good, and the other one completely wearing it on her sleeve. And as a result, coming across like a big Debbie Downer for most of the movie. But a completely understandable Debbie Downer for reasons that I'll explain in the spoiler section. And the movie does a decent job of showing how both of these two methods of grieving are actually in conflict with one another over the course of the movie. And both absolutely want to resolve the differences between them, but there's this giant wall that just keeps getting in the way, and, I mean, it's understandable. And yeah, I guess at this point I should probably talk about the spoilers. So, in short, this movie is not very good. I actually kind of hated it by the end of it. But if you want to watch this movie for yourself, it is available currently on Netflix in America. I'm not sure about other countries. But if it's not available there, or you just don't have Netflix, then feel free to click the Amazon link in my description so that I can get a kickback when you rent the movie there. Oh yeah, and for all of you out there that have issues with animal deaths, there is one cat that is killed by the end of this film. That kind of shit doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you, you have been sufficiently warned. And with that all said, my fellow gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. Alrighty then, so it turns out what happened to this family before the movie began is they lost their youngest daughter. And because of this, the mom has started to lose her mind, so the dad has the idea of let's move into this big fixer-upper house, because hey, you're an architect, and maybe fixing up this house will help you restore what's inside. One of those, every time you piece together a piece of this house, you restore a bit of your soul. Except unfortunately, that part of the movie is underplayed for most of the film, so it's almost like it didn't even need to be there. Like, you'd think part of the reason you would make her an architect in the first place is so that she would know what a disappointments room is, but she doesn't. And we only really get one scene of her doing any sort of repairs, the rest of the movie is just her talking about it and not doing it. But I suppose that's neither here nor there, and that's really a minor complaint given all the major complaints I have over the course of this movie. So yeah, after moving into this house, the mother starts seeing things that don't seem to be there, like she sees this one big black dog outside. And then one day, while she's walking outside and surveying the property, she sees a light turn on upstairs. But at this point in time, there's no one in the house, so she's like, who the fuck turned on the light? So she goes upstairs, where she discovers this giant wardrobe, like straight out of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and quickly realizes that behind the wardrobe is this hidden door. 
And not only is this door locked, it appears nowhere on the floor plans of the house. And one day while cleaning the kitchen, she uncovers this box that holds a bunch of keys that seem to go to other parts of the property. So she goes upstairs to try them on the door, but none of them work. But this is when she has the brilliant idea to check the door frame itself, and she finds the key on top of the door. And so she goes inside at this point, and that's when the door shuts and locks behind her. And so she screams and bangs on the door, but no one outside can hear her. And she starts having all these visions or flashbacks of this old man named the Judge who owned this house beforehand. And basically him and his black dog tormenting this little girl that he shoved in the room. So she freaks out and passes out in the room, and then she wakes up and the door is open and goes downstairs. And once down there, she screams at her family for not helping her when she was banging on the door, but then she finds out she was only up there for a couple minutes. And to her, it felt like she was up there for fucking hours. And this is when the dad gets really concerned, because it turns out the mother has a history of psychosis. And it turns out this has been happening ever since the mom accidentally suffocated their daughter. And yeah, if you've seen the movie, I'm kind of giving away all the little twists and turns over the course of the movie, but I just, I don't care about this movie at all. I'm seriously trying to care in order to give you like an accurate review and go by it plot point by plot point, but I just don't give a shit. And honestly, it didn't feel like the movie gave a shit either. Because 90% of the interesting things that happen in this movie all happen in dream sequences. This movie is a bunch of scenes of a woman walking through a house and seeing something scary and then waking up and going, oh, it was just a dream. Over and over again to the point where you just don't care anymore when something interesting is about to happen. And on top of that, every time it tries to do something scary, it's all quick cut to shit. And to be completely honest, most of the time it feels like the movie is trying to cut around its own mistakes. I don't know if that's true for sure, but it's definitely a vibe I got through the course of the movie. But basically, the gist of the end of this movie is we have the main character who confronts the judge inside the disappointments room, and this is when she actually sees the vision of the judge killing his daughter. But then the judge sees her and calls her a terrible mother, and then goes off to try to kill her son. So she chases the judge throughout the house, and then starts attacking him with a hammer, and then she realizes, oh shit, I've been hitting my son with the hammer inside his bed. Well, she doesn't just realize, her husband comes in and is like, what the fuck are you doing? And no, the son isn't killed, but she still freaks out and goes, oh shit, what have I been doing? And then the movie ends with them driving away from the house, and she's looking back at the house going, oh hey, there's the judge in the window. Oh shit, was I really crazy, or was it just the judge? And honestly, even though I don't care very much, I suppose I would say the judge was real? Simply because there was no indication that she knew the backstory of the house before she went and researched it. And her son was present when she met the woman who told her about the stuff that happened in the house before she lived there, so clearly that did happen. And there are plenty of scenes that weren't dream sequences where the ghost was standing right behind her, and if she didn't see the ghost, and she didn't know it was there, and only the audience did, so clearly it had to be real. But seriously, it's a piece of shit movie, so who the fuck cares if the ghost was real? Oh shit, and one more thing, there's a subplot involving this cat in this movie that goes fucking nowhere? Because this son finds this stray cat inside the house and then tells the mother that the cat said he would protect him, and then later on in the movie, the mother ends up hallucinating this giant dog attacking her son, and then when she goes to find her son, she ends up finding the cat dead instead. So yeah, there is a bit of a setup and payoff there, the son is protected by the cat, but what the fuck was the cat in the first place? Was it the soul of the daughter protecting the son from the wrath of the judge? it would have been nice to know that. And I feel bad saying that, because I'm usually the first person to complain about the explainees, but I feel like that probably should have been explained. But not like with an extended dialogue sequence, I mean just show us like the daughter petting the cat in like the window or something. That would have been all I needed to tell me what the cat was supposed to represent. And you know what's really fucking annoying? I really want to use the pun that the disappointments room was disappointing, but I can't. Because I can't say I was disappointed in a movie that I had no faith in to begin with. So yeah, I sincerely apologize, my fellow gorehounds. I'll try to be more analytical and more in-depth in my next review, but I just want to get this one over with as fast as possible. This movie's a piece of shit, I hated it, and I hope I never have to watch it ever again. And with that all said, my fellow gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as I always say, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.